I see we're being videoed again by TowerAnytime.com. So, as wonderful an organization as it is, I want to tell you something I discovered from my last share here. It says on the video where the share takes place. It says on the video the name of the share. It also says men's share. So, just in case, as I discovered, there are non-men who listen to this on this uh, tire anytime, this is a men's share. Now, I don't mind if you want to listen, but the way that men speak is a more different to the way that women speak. Just uh, Raboy Sai in a base of Medrash, a mall, it's abyssal, yeah? Know what I'm talking about? But, um, Shai. The Shaila I wanted to ask is, it's a well known Shaila, everybody knows the Shaila. The Shaila is in the Mahagoda. Everybody knows the mitzvah, the two mitzvahs, the Raisa and Sedanite, and one is, of course, Chil's Matzah, and the, the Sveta is Sipa Yusef Tzrayim. So there's a Bavusta, a Bakanta, a Kasha, everybody asks the question. Before you do a mitzvah, normally you make a bracha. Uh, why is there no bracha at the beginning of the mitzvah, the Raisa of Sipa Yusef Tzrayim? So I want to tell you what the Chasim Saifa says. I think it's a godless. We say already in the Haggadah, it's quoting the Mishnah, when the Mishnah says, Chayv Odom Liras is Atzmo Ki'il Hu Yetzin You got to imagine yourself as though you were there. And Oy Bazoi, if you got to imagine yourself as though you were there, says the Chasim Soifer, then if that's the case, you're not yet Jewish. You're going to be fully Jewish. We are people. It's Am Yisrael. But the cloud and stroll who are the Torah comes seven weeks after that. Oy bazoy, everybody knows that when somebody is Macabal Geras, we'll be talking a little bit about Geras tonight. When somebody is Macabal Geras, the problem is at the end of the process, the men stands in the bar of the, of the mikvah, the rabbonim are standing there, the halacha demands that they ask him questions even then. And as long as the fellow is willing to go along, then he's going to be toivo and become a yid. But there's a bracha you make. Our mitzvah's tefillah. The problem is, how can he say, Asher HaKidoshona, by mitzvah, who's made me Kaddish by his mitzvahs? Because he's not yet made you Kaddish. Because you're not a yid, you're not mitzvah. So what do you do? So you dip down, splash, you come up and you... <coughs> and then you make the bracha, and then you dip down two more times. Says the Chasim Seifer, that's exactly what happens in Sipit 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 If I'm imagining myself as though I'm going up from Yitzrayim, I can't yet make the bracha. After the Yitzir, after the process, if I'm picturing myself as though I was there, then it's going to be the case that I'm now a Yid, and then after that you make a bracha. So there's no bracha at the beginning, there's a bracha after the process. Gvaldik! Posh it. Now, if we take that as our schlüssel, as our key, then we can ask ourselves an interesting question. If it's the case before Kabbalah Satara Cloud Israel is not ready, we're only going to be ready after we get there, then the shadows of Posh the How do we get ready? What is the if it were not yet Jewish, there's a process in which we transform ourselves from Stama people, Avada, Gavaldic, Yechas. And they have Ramit and Yaakov, but, but that's not the Machma Patish. The Machma Patish is going to be Har Sinai. How do we transform ourselves from Memte Shari Etuma, Memte Shari Kedusha? How does that happen? So let's stick with the Chasim Cipher. If it's going to be that the Chasim Cipher says you've got to imagine it's a, it's a Geder of Gerus, and Gerus is a Hachona, a preparation towards getting yourself ready, I was like, what was the process there? So Rashi says there was a process. And what was the process? So Rashi says, and we all know this, after three days after you see it's the shrine, the cloud of the shrine will come uh, through the Amsuf. And then when they come, the Yisra Moshe is thrown the Amsuf. Moshe schleps them from the Amsuf. The Yitzha El Midbar Shur, so they go to a Midbar called Shur. The Yerko Shlosh is Yom Midbar Balo Matzamayim. So they go three days into the Midbar and there is no water to drink. And then, Vyova, Marosa, and they come to a place called Marosa. Well, Yoch, Lishtos, Maim, and there's no water to drink there. There's water, but you can't drink it. Mimorak, it's bitter. Kimorim, him. Al Kinkarishma, Mora, which is why it's called Mora. 
So no water for three days. They come to a place that is water, but they can't drink it. But you didn't harm Al Moshe. So the people complain against Moshe Rabbeinu. Limar Manishta. They say, what are we going to drink? No, what are we going to drink? But it's like Hashem, but you Hashem eats. So Hashem shows them an eats. And everybody knows that the tree, the wood that they saw was bitter. You couldn't touch it. It was poisonous, Lomazogan, acidic. And he throws this into the Vayeshlach El Mayim, the Intercom Mayim, and the water becomes sweet. And then it says, Shom, Som, Loi, Chok, Umishpot, Shom, Niso. There, at that point, Hashem gave them Chok and Mishpot, the Shom, Niso. And there, there was a testing going on. They were tested. So the question really is, what went on there? What's this chot v'bishpot? Rashi says an interesting zach. Bear in mind the chasm cipher. Bear in mind a hachona for ya, for yadus for Yiddishkeit for Kabbalah Satera. So this is Rashi. Some some law. The mora nos lahem mixes pashis shel Torah. There we got a little bit of the pashis of the Torah. And what were those? She is chasm bahem. She is ask bahem that we could get into, as they say in Hein Dikesh Shabbos, Parah Aduma, Bedinim. So the parsha, or rather the, the process by which Cloud and Sro, coming out from its shrine, not yet Makabal Torah, were going to be able to be Makabal Torah, they had to have a, a, an introduction to Torah. And what was that? Shabbos, Parah Aduma, and Dinim. You with me so far? But there's a problem. Now the problem is the interesting problem. The problem is, now, I don't know if you, when I'm sometimes teaching uh, complete beginners, which I, I sometimes do, I have to explain to them exactly how the Torah works. So I usually say to them like this, you've got to say to yourself before you look at the Chumash, who wrote the book? Okay? I think everybody here knows the answer to this one. Yes? After you've convinced yourself that Hashem is Borach is the author of the book, then there's something else that comes, which I say, and it sounds as though it's a vid. As though I'm being flippant and making a joke, but I'm very serious. You've got to say to yourself, God's good at Hebrew. Right? God's good at Hebrew. That means to say, if there's something wrong with the possum, if it's in the masculine, it should be in the feminine. If it's in the plural, it should be in the singular. If it's in the past tense, it should be in the present tense. You've got to say to yourself, why is it written like that? Because God's good at Hebrew. Hashem doesn't make mistakes. I think I told you once, there's only one word that does not occur in the vocabulary of the Almighty. Did I tell you this? What is the one word that does not occur in the vocabulary of Hashem Yisbarak? Oops. Hashem never says, oops. So if you write something, it's right first time. And if it doesn't make sense, why? And that's Rashi. Rashi, that somebody wrote a book, actually. I was seeing Shirim in Yerushalayim a couple of years ago. There's a lady there come up to tell me it was her husband who wrote the book. I quoted this. I've never read the book. But the book's called What's Bothering Rashi? Come across this book. What's Bothering Rashi? It wasn't that Rashi was sitting in you know, medieval France one day saying, I'm so bored today, what will I do? I oh, know, I shall write a commentary on the Torah. That's not what went on. There's something which doesn't fit Shtimnish with the Posuk, and Rashi, therefore, because of his complete comprehensive mastery of Shas, Vakulo, Vakulo, simply took the Mahalach from various Shitas in the Madrashim or the, the Gemara and says, this is, this is the answer to that problem. Yeah? Uh, uh, Rashi's troubled by the fact, the fact the Possit writes, which you will lay before them. Yeah? Why do you want to say, you should say, which you will teach them. Why say lay before them? So Rashi quotes from Chazal. That Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Al Sa'ala al Daikha, don't let it enter your mind that I'll teach the Jewish people this halacha once, twice, three times, until they don't off by heart and I've done my job, or you've done your job. Said Hashem, Nishkanuk, not good enough. They've got to know and have available to them everything. It's got to be like a shulchan oruch, the salt, the pepper, everything that you need, the cutlery, it's all on the table. You've got to know why the halacha is like it is and why the halacha isn't like it isn't. 
That's the shackle of Atari and the Gomorrah. He'll own Shammai, and we'll pass it like he'll own not Shammai. Why not? Because real knowledge is knowing not just why a thing is like it is, but also why it's not like it's not. Does that make sense? So Rashi doesn't, he, he didn't make things up. The problem is here, the Rashi says something which is very, very fundamental. Rashi says, there had to be a chona, just let the chasm say it. it was a process of getting Klaus Roll ready from Yitzhak Yitzrayim to the next stage. And the post says, Hashem says to Klaus Roll, I'm only taking you out from Yitzrayim in order for you to come to me in the Kabbal Torah. So this is the process to get them ready. The Shon Maseu, say Mephoshim, is in order to see whether they would makabal the Torah besimcha. Or it's just going to be, you know, uh, laws we've got to keep. But you're going to be mamish into it. It's going to get you excited. That's what I say. The problem, though, is that the Rashi says that there were three things. The three things that they were given were Shabbos and Poraduma and Dinim. Unfortunately, say the Dinim were business laws. A yid has to be a yid in everything, in geshef, the way that we drive on the roads. <laughs> I live in Brooklyn. Um, the way that you drive on the roads. And everything that you do, it has to be apparent that you're a, that you're a, a frum yid. But that's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, the Mechilta and the Gemara and Sanhedrin involved, that really what they were given was Shabbos, Kibud Ab the Aim, and Dinim. And Rashi changes that. Rashi takes out Kibbutz the aim, and instead Rashi puts in Pora Uduma. Now this is a problem. This is a yoit in a cloud. Rashi normally simply takes what the Gemara says. But this is nowhere. And believe it or not, the morale of Prague in Gur Arya, Shrai's Gur, I've never, Rabbi Sai, I've never seen such a lotion directed at Rashi HaKodesh in my life as the lotion of the morale of Prague on this point. He says, how can Rashi do this? Call her Moise of Gurea? Imagine saying that about Rashi HaKodesh. If you're adding up, if you're making up your own stuff, call her Moise of Gurea, you're detracting, you're taking away from the Torah Kadosha. How can Rashi do such a thing? Get ending. So says the morale of Prague. So I thought Taki Bizet and if we maybe go into this a little bit and continue our Mahalach, then remember the key to understanding this is that the transformation of a cloud and straw, the transformation of a goy, a nation, and cloud and straw at that stage is not yet the Am HaKadosh. We're not yet in the Kabbal Torah. The transformation has to come about by a process of a Chonah. There's always a process of a chonah. What is the process of a chonah of a cloud? So it seems to be this. But why does Rashi change it and insist? Incidentally, later on, when Rashi quotes this later in the Chumash, he puts back Kibadavim. He still insists on Paraduma. But he puts back Kibadavim. What is he what's he stelling? What's he emphasizing? Batonin, what's he emphasizing here? You with me in the problem? Okay. Now we can get Rashi off the hook if only we could find a Maimar Chazal that would, that would supply that answer so that Rashi is not making it up himself. And I want to spoil the, spoil the whole shear by giving the answer straight away. I found one. Right? There was a Medrash, a Medrash which... <coughs> there are various, various Medrashim. This one is called the Medrash Seder Oilam Zuta. It was published 250 years before Rashi was born. And there it says... Pora Aduma. There it says Shabbos, Pora Aduma, and Dinim. The morale of Prague's Taina falls away. It's not that Rashi added his own thing. It's part of our Messiah. In which case, we don't have anything to worry about. But I'm just wondering if we can go a little bit deeper into that as to why Rashi would want to, to do such a thing. So there's a Gemara and Shabbos. And the Gemara and Shabbos tells a very, very famous story. We're all familiar with this story. It's a, it starts off with a famous story about the fellow who wanted to get Hillel to lose his temper. Remember this story. So he waited to Friday afternoon until he knew that Hillel was in the bath. And me can Hillel, me can Hillel, because they had a bet. Him and his friend had a bet. Who could make Hillel lose his temper? Everybody knows Rabbi Sai. Nobody was able to do it. He, he, eventually, he loses it. the guy loses his temper. I had a bet I could get you to lose your temper, and I couldn't. Couldn't get Hill to lose his temper. 
After that, the Gemara then tells an interesting story. And we'll see, Taka, that there's a parallel again between the process of Gerus and the process of Klaus Rabbi Makabel, Torah There's a story of a non Jewish person, Goy, who came in front of Shammai. You Jews, how many Torahs do you have? What's the answer? Two. We have two, the written Torah and the oral tradition, as they say. I'm willing to take your word about the written Torah. But this oral Torah business, that's not for me. Okay? At this point, Garena, he, got, uh, um, um, he gets very upset with him. Now, Garena says, Garena, convert me, I'm an Asher, I'm an Indian Torah, I want you to uh, convert me as long as I only have to get the Torah, Shemakasav. Okay? Garboy. So Shalmai, oy vey, nebuch, this guy is a, a suicide convert. Uh, Some of you should have warned him. Shalmai gets furious with him, but see him in the Zif, and he kicks him out with all sorts of, um, what's the opposite of brochas? Uh, and he comes with the ball lifting. Hilo, Gareni, he says, you know what? Convert me, same, same sprach, convert me. And he says, fine, I'll, no problem, I'll convert you. All you need to do, do is keep the Torah Shemakasav. At that point, he says to him, fine. Teach me, he says, This is Aleph, Beis Gimel. The next day he comes back, if you remember, he turns it in Dalad, he puts the Dalad, that's Aleph. He said, But yesterday he told me the same. Oh. So you see, you need somebody to teach you what the Torah Shabbat means. That's the Torah Shabbat Peh. Oh, Kabaldik. So this is the first, this is the first uh, guy. So, I mean, I don't know if that sounds to you like a strange story. It's, <laughs> it sounds to me like a strange story. Would you be Macabal a guy who wanted to keep the Torah Shemakasav? No, we would not. Go away, we would say to him in whatever terms we want to employ. Go away. Oh, but it's okay? We have a Maimah Chazal which talks about Kalal Yisrael, us, when we come at the end of this process and we start at Har Sinai. The Possum says, what did Kalal Yisrael say? What did we say when it came to, uh, to Kabbal Satara? The one that we said that the guy didn't get? We said, Nasa, the Nishma. Oh, that's godless, huh? We'll hear it. Sorry, we'll keep it, and then we'll hear what's in it. Wonderful. So why did Hashem have to hold Har Sinai over her head like a gigas? If you get two contradictory Maimori Chazal, one says that we were so enthusiastic, just fine, we're signing, we don't have to see the contract. Signing, oh, Gabaldic. The other one says Hashem has to hold Har Sinai over her head like a gigas. You know what the Al Shach HaKodesh says in his commentary in Pirkei Ovis, which I translated, will be published in 2016. Um, see Eichler's for further details. Uh, basically, uh, the answer says that the Al Shach, Cloud this royal woman only wanted the Kabul, the, the Tarash Bixav. The Tarash Balpeh, we didn't want. The Nasib and Nishma says the Al Shach went and the Tarash Bixav, no problem, Tarash Bixav. How many minutes? 613? Okay. But if you throw in the Durabonans, I may spear. I mean, I mean, anybody ever calculated how many Durabonans there are? That's a little bit more. That was too much. That's what Hashem has to hold Harsina over our heads, like a gigas. So the idea of a guy wanting to be Mikabal Gerus, uh, al uh, he, you can only teach him the Torah Shemakasav, which Shammai rejected him for, he was Mikabal him for. Maybe Hillel is aware of the fact that that's exactly what or other Yidden, the real Yidden, said the exact same thing. There's a process to move from one stage to the other stage. There's hope for this guy. It's not insanity. That's exactly what's our reluctance based on taking on too much. Okay. Then there's another one. Another guy came to Shammai. <laughs> His reputation should have got out, Nebuch. I want you to teach me the whole Torah when I'm standing on one foot. In other words, just give me the headline. Give me the core, the shedra, the one thing. So he had a, a, a stick in his hand. And he hits him with the... <laughs> you want to become Jewish? Right, off you go. Shemiyada, Baal, Hilal, Gareni, Amala, Dalecha, Sonel, Lechavecha, Lotav. 
what is disgusting to you, don't do it to anybody else. And he becomes a girl. How about that one? What do you feel about that one? A guy comes to you and says, I want you to be to be with me as a girl. I want, only want one mitzvah. What would you say to him? But again, that's the Jewish perspective. The Ramban has a sefer, a mitzvah. I don't know if you've ever learned this. The Ramban, a very difficult sefer. Short, he says that if you only had the Aseris Adibrus, al Pisfora, you could work out the rest of the 603. Ever learned that sefer? It's very interesting. And of course, we all know that the Emes, the Iker, is this one mitzvah. From one mitzvah, you can work out the rest. Which is belief in Hashem Yisborach. Now, it's very complicated how you would do this, but it's not impossible, it's not out of the question that from one mitzvah you could work out the rest. There's a safer by the Ramban on this. Therefore, it's not insane to say this is the beginning. This is also a haskala that could lead to a proper Kabbalah Sagiris. With me? Shuv Ma'is ben Echad, our third guy. Another guy came along, Shuv Ayved Achri Beis Medrash. I love this guy. He's going past the base of Medrash. With Shomo called Seifer, Shahaya Aimer, Vela Begodim, Asher Yasa Choshim Ve'efer. He hears them discussing the Begodim of the Kohen Godel. And this, obviously, this was a fashionista, this fellow. If that's the Loshan. Is it fashionista or fashionisto? I'm not sure. I don't speak Spanish. Anyway, so basically, he's obviously, he's into nice clothes, right? He has an account at Nordstrom. That's seriously, if there are any ladies watching, then they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Gehört von Nordstrom, Rabbi Isai. Nine? Okay, don't worry. Trust me. Anyway, Macy's? No. Nordstrom. <laughs> right? So this fellow is walking past, and he hears them talking about the clothes of the Cohen Gardel, and he's like, mm, that sounds nice. I think I, I think I really saw an ephod. Uh, I mean, a choshen, that's, I mean, that's the latest fashion accessory, right? A choshen is for me. So he says, who gets to wear them? The Cohen Gardel. Gewaldic. So he goes to Shammai. <laughs> I would like you to be me, 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 I would like to become Jewish. I'm going to ask that I can become the Kohen Godel. You can guess what came after that. He comes to Hilo, and Hilo says, no problem. You can become Jewish. What about the Kohen Godel? No problem. You know the joke on the fellow who wanted to become a Kohen. You know that one, yes? Yes? No? Yes, some do, some don't. All right, well, just because of you, Right? So there was a fellow in California, and the Californian goes to see the, the rabbi. He says, Rabbi, I, I, I would like to become a Kohen. The rabbi says, Bisti Mishigi? Actually, it was a conservative rabbi. Oh, are you crazy? Um, he said, uh, he said no, I, it really is important to me to become. He says, No, I, you're being ridiculous. No, no, rabbi, I've, I've always wanted to be a Kohen, and, and if you were willing to make me a Kohen, I'd be willing to give a million dollars to the synagogue refurbishment fund. See you tomorrow in the sanctuary. So the next day the guy comes, what are we going to do with some sugar now? So he, he says, are you standing the beam and put a talus over your head and I'm going to walk around you seven times and spritz kid and wine at you? <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, then we'll write out a little bit of paper, Gvaldic, right, you are a Cohen, signed Rabbi Fraud. And the, he hands him the piece of paper, and the guy hands over the check, and the rabbi says, no, don't, don't make it the synagogue, make it. Um, and he puts it in his wallet, he says, no, but tell me, why did you want to be a cone so badly? He says, well, my father was a cone, and his father was a cone, and his father was a cone. Um, that's the joke that they tell. <laughs> oh, but the emphasis is that, you know, when he starts to learn, he realizes what a cone is, and then he says, Avada, I've got to do it in the right way. All three came together and they blessed the, the Savlonis of Hill, and they were not so pleased with the reception they got from Shammai. But again, Taka, the idea of taking one mitzvah and building from one mitzvah to another mitzvah, another mitzvah, another mitzvah, that's how Klal Yisrael goes. Lo'oyelam, Chazal tell us, ye'asak odom betayra afilo shelo l'shmo, shemitoch l'shmo bo l'shmo. That certainly, if this guy wants to become, you know, Jewish because he wants to have the fashion accessory, you know, the two buttons at the back or the strimal or whatever it is, then it doesn't seem to be so, uh, so uh, sincere. Listen to the Loshon of Chazal. It always has to be the case. I mean, every single one of us start off learning Shalol from the wrong reasons. 
and mitos shloshmo and then bolishmo. So this guy's no worse. This guy's no worse than that. From that insincerity, he could graduate. And Hilal Tak encourages him, and he graduates. So the process by which somebody wants to become Jewish is the exact same as of Tal Yisrael. Imagining ourselves as though we're going up from Mitzrayim. That's why there's no mitzvah beforehand of Sefer Tzitz Mitzrayim. You as yet are not a Jew. That's going to come later. Ah, it's going to start insincerely? Well, it starts insincerely for all of us. And from insincerity or for the wrong motives, you can move to the right motives. And Tak is interesting. I always wondered, have you ever looked at Hilchus Gerush? Have you ever looked at it in the Shulchan Aruch? I, 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 when I looked at this, I mean, years and years ago, when I looked at this, I must admit, I'm, I'm, I, I never quite understood this. We all know the Gemara says that Roiv Gerim are a sepakas to Klal Yisrael. I don't know what the figures are in the United States of America, but in England, where I came from, which interest, interestingly has the tradition, the London, in England, all Gerus is done through the London based team. Did you know this? Only one based in the country, London based team. The London based team has the tradition still at the Yom as, a, as being the most difficult based team to get Gerus from. Although the standards have gone down, I'd have to say, from when I was a young man, uh, when the based team in London would easily keep you waiting seven years for Gerus, now it's a mere three years. Right? But Lord Jacobowitz, in one of his books, writes that in the 19th century, the story of a fellow who was be, he'd been through the whole process and he was about to have Brice Miller. So they took him into this Victorian lounge and, of course, they had to remove the clothing ready for the operation. And he's sitting there with a towel over the relevant area and they kept him waiting there on Spielkies for half an hour. Now, there's no general anesthetics or local anesthetics in those days, Rabbi Sai. And I'm kind of guessing that it's quite a painful process when it's after eight days old. Yeah? Anyway, the fellow's sitting there, schwitzing for half an hour, and eventually the door opens, and in comes a solemn procession. The rabbis, the rabbinim of the base team, various other people, doctors, and standing at the front, leading the procession, in a velvet cushion was a guy, a guy carrying a scimitar. You know what a scimitar is? You know one of these big bent swords? You know, like the Arabs have? Right, imagine yourself, two shell this! Chaya Vodom Lira says, Atzmo. I want you to imagine yourself sitting there and this procession of guys are walking towards you, this guy's a big sword. What are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Ah! Out the window. Even if it's not open, I'm out the window. <laughs> so they used to make it very, very difficult. Uh, but even though Antakya is still, I think, the most difficult one uh, based in the world to get um, Gerus from, but this is in Hilchus Gerim, right? The beginning of Hilchus Gerim. And it says that there's Kishabal, there's Geir, Amr Loy, Mari Issa, Shabal says Geir. Numash, you're going to wind earth when you want to become Jewish. Don't you know that Klaus Yisrael in these days are treated terribly? We're in Gaul, it's Vichulu Vichulu. And it says like this. If he says, I know, and I'm willing still to, I still want to become Jewish. Then you've got to teach the person the Ikri Hadas. Which is Yichud Hashem. And then, of course, the Avoid Azor is Osa. And you spend a lot of time in that. That's the Ikr. Hashem Echod. Elohim Acherim. No. Omadin Aisa. Listen to the Loshan. Mitzos mitzvahs kalos and mitzvahs mitzvahs chumorois. Then you got to teach him a little bit, a few of the mitzvahs kalos, tzitzis, and chumorois, chidi uh, krisas, just a few. I've got to tell you a wonderful story. I just heard this recently from a friend in, in Flatbush, a rov there, I've forgotten his name, Goldfinger, I think he's called, and he told me an interesting shadow. They brought out a new. Uh, a new, sha- new safer of Shilas from Ramachi Feinstein. I've not seen it yet. Have you come across this? So new Shilas and Shilas Ramachi Feinstein. I think one of his, his grandsons brought this out. And there was an interesting Shilas. I wonder what you think about this. The Shilas was to, brought to Ramachi Feinstein like this. Uh, there was a lady who wanted to, who has gone through the whole Geras process. And right at the end, they asked her the following question. Was she willing to cover her hair? 
She said no. So they wanted to know from Ramoshi Feinstein, can they go ahead with the Geras? And Ramoshi Feinstein was furious at the Rabonim for asking that question. Furious. Um, as you know, a woman covering her hair, it's only an asmachta in the Posuk. Um, and as you only mechuyev, as the halacha says, to teach them mitzvahs kalos, mitzvahs kamuras, then you shouldn't have asked that question. Again, it's an evolving process. Maybe even if she didn't and wouldn't, she would eventually. It's a Kabbalah thing. But now that you've asked it, that's the getter of the Shaila. He was furious with the Ramonim for asking it, because now it's a Shaila. But you shouldn't have asked it in the first place. But then, which I didn't read on, or I'd forgotten, maybe I did once upon a time, the halacha says like this, but not only that do you have to tell mixus chamuras, but something else you've got to say. Something else you've got to insist on. Ain mar malov. Don't be too, don't give, uh, overburden them with too many halachas. And don't tell them too dikdukim of halachas, too much detail. However, something else you've got to say. And that is like this. You've got to tell the person, you want to keep mitzvahs, and when you do keep mitzvahs, you're gaining for yourself. And there's no such thing as a tzaddik gomer. Except somebody who's got the wisdom to understand. Who does these mitzvahs? And you've got to let them know that oil of is only for tzaddikim. And if you see a yid who's got tsar in this world, who's going through tsar in this world, then you've got to say, or oh, you see a rosha who's having a good time in this world, it's because Hashem Yisbarach says the halacha waits for punishment. And not only that, he can't give us all the scar that we deserve in this world. This world's too small to contain it. And says the, Sh- the Shulchan Aruch when he writes in the Ber Yosef in the tour, because that's definitely going to disturb and distress the guy who wants to become Jewish. Tzaddik Veraloi upsets and worries everybody. We had a share on this, I can't remember when, six months ago, even Moshe Rabbeinu was upset so here the Shulchan Aruch, which I hadn't paid any attention to, I must admit, says that a Beistin who's Megayar somebody, apart from teaching them halachas of Shabbos, etc., there's an Indian, an essential Indian of Ashkafa that must be part of the process of Gerish. Tzadik Meralo. Any human being who connects to Hashem Yisborach must be and will be distressed by Tzadik Meralo. I would imagine today, in our world, in our Tukufa, you would have to, it have to be part of the process to explain to them the idea of the Holocaust. How on earth can the Chorman in Europe fit in the Klaus There are answers for this. I wrote, I wrote about this in two of my books, and you know, I'm only that size. There are good dining have talked about this. So that has to be part of the process. That has to be part of the process. So the Alsha Kakodish, the Alsha says like this. It's interesting, Taka, in defense of Rashi, if I hadn't found that Medrash, the Medrash, uh, uh, what's the name of the Medrash Seda Olam Zuta, then I would have answered the Rashi, or I'd answered the time of Morala Prague differently. My, my answer would have gone like this. As we all know, Rashi's commentary and the Chumash is often challenged by who? The Ramban. If I could almost say that the Ramban's, you know, made his his life's work out of picking holes in the Rashi. It's interesting, if you look at the Ramban on this Rashi, when Rashi changes it to Shabbos and Poraduma and Dinim, the Ramban, no, he talks about something else. But this would be the way, he, would, he should have shrived and said, that's not what Chazal say. The Ramban says that in Rashi many times in this parish in the Chumash. It doesn't say a word. The Al Shakakodesh, my favorite commentator, also, who is Medayak everything, also lets the Rashi, who be quotes, pass without any challenging. It would automatically lead me to believe that there was such a medrash. The fact that Ramban doesn't challenge, Dossalein should be Ganuk. But the Alshach says something interesting. First of all, it is part of our Messiah. But why is it so important at Cloud Israel as preparation for Kabbalah Satira have to be taught about Shabbos 
and Pora Duma and also Dinim. Why does he insist in Pora Duma? So says the al something which is very simple. If you are a Maimon and a Shem is by Shem is Borach, there are going to be two aspects of your Amuna which will give you a headache. They must give you a headache. The first says, that, says the al is of course Chok. Chok. And already Rashi says that mm-hmm. the Umas Ha'olam Shtech is what? The Paradum. And the Paradum is the classic example. Why do you believe in this nonsense? You've got no rational explanation for this nonsense. Chok's always a challenge. And the second is Tzadik Morali. Says the Al Sheikh, this story here, when they came to a place in a desert with no water for three days, no complaint, but when they find water, and the water's too bitter to drink, do you get this idea? You're in Saurus, and you think you've got the answer, and even then, it's almost like a shtech. Do you know that I had a Misa during the Second World War? Uh, it's a pell of the, you, you cannot, compl- you can't criticize the Nazis when it comes to cruelty. When it comes to cruelty, they were exceptionally talented. And this is an Emma Misa, I can't remember where I read this, but in one of the history books, it recorded that the elite of secular Germ- uh, German Jewish society the Nazis got them, and they were taking them to Auschwitz or some one of the camps. You know what they did? <clears throat> Have you ever seen a cat with a mouse? What? A cat with a mouse. Have you seen a cat playing with a mouse? The cat doesn't kill the mouse. Not at all. The cat plays with the mouse. So first of all, it catches it. I saw this once. And it catches the mouse, and it's got its claws on it like this. And the poor little thing's terrified. Then the cat goes like this. And the mouse scuttles away. And then it goes and pulls it back. And lets it go again. And it, again, and it pl- until it gets fed up. Then it takes the mouse in its mouth and bites it just a little bit. Then it lets it go and does it all over again. And eventually it kills it. In fact, somebody wrote a book, some Yid, you may have seen it, it's called Mouse in German, in which the Nazis were cats and the Yid were mice. Because exactly, that's exactly how they played with Yid. It wasn't just that they killed them, they liked a fun killing them. And what they did was they took the most elite, the most elite of German secular society or European secular society on the train ride to Auschwitz. But they didn't say it was going to Auschwitz. Oh no. They took a luxury train. And on they, they told them they were being uh, taken to the east. So they took them in this train. And I mean, they were served by waiters in the train the way that there was their derech, derech chaim. And people, and they were given, you know, caviar and all sorts of gorgeous food. When they arrived at the concentration camp, they'd had built a facade that looked like a nice uh, train station. It was just like a film set. Just, a bit. and there were people, of course, with the uniforms, never hidden, and they were taking away their luggage. And some of these rich secular Jews were writing down the numbers on the backs of their uniforms. They looked a bit dodgy, these people, a little bit, you know, questionable. Maybe they're going to steal their, their posh belongings and their Yves Saint Laurent um, uh, luggage. And of course, they walked through, and then, of course, it was Auschwitz. They like to, they like to, to play with you. So, what you're going to be, like everybody's going to be, is troubled by Chok, and you're going to be troubled by Tzadik Miralo. And here's Klaal Yisrael. Klaal Yisrael go out from Israel. They're Mamini Bashem is Borach. They're willing to enter them into the meat bar. Hashem says, I remember the chesed that you the love that you had towards me. You're going to go into the desert. There's no food there. And then there's no water. And there's no complaint. For three days, there's no complaint. And when they eventually get water, it's too bitter to drink. Can't you imagine people turning around and saying, Fiazoi. Fiazoi. It's Saudi Barat. What have we done wrong? We deserve this. And then the stick, which is bitter. You throw a bitter stick, a, bis- a bitter piece of wood into bitter water, and what would you expect to happen? Logically, I'll be derechatev, I'll be seichel. It'd be more bitter, but it becomes sweet. In this, you combine both the tfiyas against the muna in one thing. Because tzadik v'ra'aloi, here we've got people who don't deserve punishment. And the solution to the, to the to the terrible matziv is something that makes no sense whatsoever, because it never makes sense as why we're in it, and it never makes any sense as how we're going to get out of it. But we do. In this issue here, cloud stroll have to be brought to chok and mishpat as being the same thing. Our core of that. Are you going to be makabel that 
very quickly, I know we're running out of time, but the Chobos al Vobos is my new work I'm translating, and will hopefully be my next Sefer, uh, translating the Shara Betochen of the Chobos al Vobos. And here in, in Shara Betochen, Perit Gimel, he talks about why it is that Tzadik can suffer and why it is that Russia can prosper. And he says, it's very stark, it's a loss, and sometimes Hashem allows the Tzadik to suffer. For Tzkusim in the world to come, that's easy, but difficult. Sometimes he says, in order to see if it's a real Tzadik or not. Or the world is full of people who claim to be rabbis or not. And sometimes you can find somebody who claims to be a Tzadik. But when things get tough, <laughs> is he a Tzadik or isn't he a Tzadik? Sometimes the suffering of a Tzadik inspires everybody else to sort themselves out into Davin in order to help him. But why does a Russia prosper? Well, the Chobos of Obvious gives lots and lots of reasons. One of the reasons, he says, is that it could be that the Russia did something good before. Hashem never removes reward. It could be, listen to this, that Hashem knows that the Russia is going to do Teshuva at the end and use that money and the benefits that he's given to him for something good. It could be that he's never going to do Teshuva. But his son's going to do Teshuva, he's going to yash him the money. We never know. But you need to realize that the Rabban Shom has his cashman. And when somebody is, has a situation that looks to us like Tsar, it's part of Hashem's cheshman. That Chot and Mishpah are the same thing. And sometimes the answer is going to be found in something that makes no sense whatsoever. Did I ever show you this? When I was here last time, did I show you this? Tell you a story. I was in, the, in Manhattan doing a Shabbaton about six months ago. Do you ever see a face that you just like? I, I, I sometimes see faces that I just like. There was a yid there, I would say a man in his 70s, early 70s, white hair, very smart. It, the shul was, I think it's called Ozi. It was the shul of uh, Josla Rosenblatt. They call it Ohab Sedik, I think. It was the first Hungarian shul in Manhattan. It's now in Upper Manhattan. And uh, there was this yid there, and I liked him. And I spoke three times over Shabbos. First time, just a smile. Second time, we schmoozed a little bit. And third time, I don't know, I must have said something that touched him. Because uh, he took off, he took up his, his, his sleeve and he showed me, he said, look. He showed me a number in his arm. He was in Auschwitz. And he said it was very upsetting to him that people are forgetting. And they said, it's history, it's not history, it's living history. We schmoozed a little. And the next day, because I knew I have to write, and I write for Mishpocha magazine, as you know, so it's usually about where I go. Every two weeks, I write about my journeys. Just come back from Denver, Colorado. Um, this week, it's about Los Angeles. Two weeks, time would be Denver. I always meet Yidden. Fascinating. Yeah, Yidden are just, every Yid's a story. So I thought, I wanted to put this Yid in my article. So I phoned him up, and I said, Ploini, um, it's Rabbi Rubenstein. I, I, we met yesterday. Yeah, of course. I said, I'd like to write about you in Mishpacha magazine. Would you give me a shus to write about you? He said, well, as long as you don't use my name. I said, no, there's no problem. I certainly won't use your name. I said, but if you're okay, I can ask you a couple of questions. And of course, you're talking to somebody who went through the camps. So you've got to speak with uh, a certain delicacy. I said, I hope you don't mind, but you remember you showed me the number in your arm. He said, yes. I said, could you tell me what it is? And he gave a little chuckle. I said, why do you want to know the number of my arm? I said, I can't use your name, I'll use your number. So he gave another little chuckle. He said, have you got a pen? I said, yeah. He said, write it down. The, rum, the number was 169016. 169016. That number. And I wrote this down. And I said, now can you, he said, no, no. Don't move on yet. Look at the number. I looked at the number. So what do you see? I said, uh, I'll ask you the question. What do you see? A number. He said, I was looking at that number on my arm two years ago. It was during Sphere Sa'imer, when Cloud and Stroll are going out from being one to the other, from being just a people to being a holy people, an Am Kaddish. And I noticed for the first time the number on my arm. It was the 23rd day of Sphere Sa'imer. And suddenly I noticed 
that one and six is seven, and one and six is seven is fourteen, and add nine, what do you get? Twenty-three. Fine. Look, ich bin a kalta litvak, you know. Yeah. Fine. Say no, no, no. But look at the number. Yeah. What do you see? <laughs> so see, that's the way I see the number. But you're supposed to show it to somebody like that. And then what do you see? Now you've got 1 and 9 is 10, 1 and 9 is 10, and 6, that's 26. What's 26, he says to me? Is that Hashem's name, the Shem Habaya? Your K Bovke? Yes. And add 26 and 23, what do you get? 49. Sirius Aimer. Kalpa Litvagis. Fine. And then he allowed me to ask the next question. And then I said, um, where are you from? He said, Czechoslovakia. Which camps were you in? He said, I was in Theresienstadt and Auschwitz. I was six when I went to Auschwitz. Now, already, if you hear somebody survive the camps, if they say they came from Hungary, you understand, because they went in late. So there's more chance of surviving. When you ever hear of a Yid who went from Poland, they, the Gehenna they went through is... And when he said Czechoslovakia, which of course was the first place to fall to the Nazis, anybody survived the camps from Czechoslovakia, how did they survive? But when he said he was six, I immediately thought, well, how come you survived? But I didn't say that. I didn't need to. He then just said, Four words. And my blood froze. You know that, that, that expression in English, your blood freezes? You know, my blood froze. I've used it before. I, I never met, now it did mean something. You know what he said? Mm -hmm. I was a twin. You get it? I was a twin. I said, how come you survived? I was a twin. And then in case I didn't get it, in case you don't get it, he added a Mengele twin. Mengele, the, the Rosha, Shein Kamoihu, the doctor, experimented in Jewish twins. He had a twin sister. That's how they survived as a six-year-old in Auschwitz. And he said to me, most of the experiments were done in my sister. I was, and again my blood froze, I was the control. You know in scientific experiments what a control is? You get two things, two groups, Let's say you're trying a new medicine on one. So one group, they get what's called a placebo, just a pretend medicine. The other one get the real ones. They're the control, they're the experiment. Right? And then you compare at the end, see if there's any difference. In most of the experiments, he was the control. He was left alone. And it was the sister who was experimented on. But not always. Interesting, Taka both survived, both married, and interestingly, both married twins. But Rabboisai, you're talking about, no, look, we all know stories of all people either in our mishpachas, the people we've met who went through the camps. Um, just recently, I think I told you, my, one of my great heroes passed away about seven months ago, sorry, six months ago in England, Yaakov Yosef Weiss, his son, Rabbi Naftali, um, Saat Machosi, very, very, one of my closest friends. He wasn't just in Auschwitz, he was in the gas chambers in Auschwitz. And they marched the barracks down to be gassed, they made them strip, in, and they already were there, but they didn't, it wasn't that they got off the train. They, they, were, they knew exactly it was Tutsuch. So they closed the door of the gas chambers, he's standing next to somebody, and the fellow says to him, do you think Hashem can save us even now? And he says, just let me try him, Yeshua, Hashem, Keheref, Ein, Hashem can save you. In the blinking of an eye, even now. And the door opened. The commandant of Auschwitz was standing there to apologize. There had been an administrative mistake it wasn't their barracks that was due for gassing that day. It was a different barracks. So they were marched out, made to redress, and marched in column back to their barracks where they passed another column of Yidden Nebuch who were going to be gassed. So I've met incredible Yidden who survived the camps with a Muna intact. But this Yid? He was experimented on by Mengele for a couple of years in Auschwitz with his sister. And when he sees the number in his, in his arm, when he's now in his 70s. What does he think about? It's the 23rd day of the Oymer. Yudki, Vovki, 49. He's still thinking about Hashem as Borach. There are Yidin who chap Sadik Viraloi. There are Yidin who can get... It's a process. 
It's a process from going out from its rhyme. Even a guy in Lahavzil is going to be troubled by this. It's something you have to work at to understand Sadiq Virali. It upsets us all. And to come to Madrid of understanding that Sadiq Virali, Chot and Mishpat the same thing, that had to be part of the process of the Geras, Lefi Shita Sachasim Seifer, of Klal Yisrael leading up to Kabbalah Satara. It's the same process as the Shulchan Aruch of the Geras of anybody becoming a Yid. It has to be. Everybody's going to be troubled by Tzadik Viraloi. As I said to you, last point, I was in the, my new work that I've been translating because it helps me so much was the Shara Betoch uh, of the Chovas of and I was down in, in, in Lakewood three weeks ago to see my old Rebbe Ramatzel Solomon Zalzain Gesund Stark, and we were schmoozing. He said, I must give you a copy of my new Sefer. So Nebuch, he's not well, as you know, so he got this little walker and he walked in through his office to his room he couldn't even pick up the book because he had to hold on to the walker. Can you get that for me? So what is it? It is Vadim On Shar Batok and the Alvovas, which of course my translation is going to feature a lot of. And he says something in there which is wonderful. He says, Not every Maimon is a Baal Batokan. Every Baal Batokan, this is the and this is the Ramban. Every Baal Batokan is of course a Maim, but not every Maimon is a Baal Batokan. Batokan, he he says, is a therapy? A therapy which if it didn't exist, they would have to create in order to solve people's despair and depression. There are people who are Bali Batokin who can go through his kids, Auschwitz, and come out and see Yud Kevovke in their arms. That's all they see. It's a process essential for anybody. Anybody. That's why Rashi insists on putting that in there. Part of our Kabbalah anyway. For care, it's not part of our Kabbalah. It's essential. That's why we have to have Chok. That to be chok as a preparation for Klal Yisrael for Kabbalah Satorah. There has to be Tzadik Baraloi. They've got to understand the chok. They've got to understand that idea of Tzadik Baraloi for Klal Yisrael when we makabal Tairaf. And all these doors later to be not just a mamin. That's only stage one. To be a Baal Betochen is the essential ingredient we need to get through a Mitzrayim to be able to come to Amam at Har Sinai to be able to tackimate the bracha. Ashia Kidishana Bamit Saisaf.